Today we're joined by Dr. Jason Warren, Associate Professor of Soil Science, and we're going to talk about improving soils today. A lot of, especially new construction, we find the the good soil is scraped off during construction and we're left some, with some pretty substandard subsoils to deal with. Yeah. What are some things that we see uh, across the state in these landscapes? Well, in, depending on where you are, you could have a clay soil or a nice loam or sand. It's, we have very diverse soils in Oklahoma, so it's hard to say what you're going to find. I mean, in certain areas you'll have clays, in certain areas you'll have sands, mm -hmm. but the general character of a subsoil is it's going to be fairly depleted of nutrients and organic matter and that's going to be a challenge for all types of soils and so this is a subsoil yep um and we could kind of compare that to, to the, the surface the surface soil we see a color difference yeah. is that the organic matter exactly and mm -hmm. you can see the biopores here and you can see all the different um, recognizable debris from years of, of uh, mm -hmm organic matter uh, additions. Mm -hmm. whereas, There's even some insects crawling around in there. Yeah, so. and mm -hmm. those are all good indicators of a healthy soil that's got every, all the parts it needs. It's got biology, it's got organic matter, it's got nutrients, and then it'll have actively growing roots mm -hmm. that can produce a nice garden for you. Whereas down here, if this is where you, what your garden looks like at the surface, it's gonna be a challenge. This is a clay loam and it's common in Stillwater in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. It's common everywhere, um, but it's problematic because water won't move through it mm -hmm. as readily as what it would this surface material. And a homeowner can kind of evaluate their soils to tell what they're dealing with, right? Yeah, so a clay, mm -hmm. when wet, it's gonna be hard to push through your fingers or moist. It's also gonna be sticky. Uh, a lot of people r associate red soils with clay and that's true to a great extent, particularly from central Oklahoma east, but then you can get out west and find clays that are, you know, yellow or gray, all mm -hmm. kinds of colors. But the great indicator is it's hard to push through your fingers and almost impossible to break when the clods are dry. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a sand here, the sands, when they're dry, they'll break apart easily. And so that's a sand mm -hmm. or a sandier soil. That's probably a sandy loam and they're going to have different issues. You're going to have a water holding capacity problem. When wet, roots will move through it, water will move through it, but it just won't hold much water. Mm -hmm. It won't hold much nutrients either uh, without organic matter in it. And, and then loams, this is a nice loam, and it's somewhere in between. It just, I, I tell students that loams just feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they, they, when you feel a loam, it's, you know that it's good. You can work it well in your hands. It's not as sticky or as coarse as the other yeah. type. So some people are lucky enough to have this uh, That's right. <laughs> in their landscapes. Um, but fortunately, the solution for your heavy clays uh, and even your sandy soils are very similar, right? Yeah, it's it build the organic matter uh, with organic amendments and then keep the ground covered. And once you build the soil to this condition, you you need to minimize your tillage because tillage is the uh, it it will destroy the organic matter. It'll destroy a lot of the organic or the um, uh, microbial and and microbial biological activity. And so you, once you build it to that, you want to leave it alone and keep it covered. Mm -hmm. and, but you always want to keep your soil covered because even this will be in a better condition by simply covering it mm -hmm. than if it's uh, exposed to rain. And this, this area actually was kind of built up from these heavier clay soils um, by being covered with mulch for years and years, probably 10, 10 12, 15 years. And yep. so you could see the, the benefit over the long term. Yep how that's affected our soil. We have a lot of organic matter that's been yeah. incorporated. That's the good thing about buying an old house, is that <laughs> this has already been done. <laughs> um, the other thing, if we're going to be adding organic matter, we do initially want to till that in, right? Yeah, you, because particularly with the clay or soils, or organic matter added to the surface is going to take years for it to be naturally moved into the s soil. And so you, if you can incorporate that to four to six inches, and you may have to, depending on the condition of the soil when you get it, you may have to do that multiple years, but once you incorporate the material, then cover it back. 
-hmm. and just keep it covered and over time you'll build something that looks like this. And we could cover that with a mulch, uh, organic mulch, or we could cover it with a cover crop yeah. um, before we're ready to plant into yeah. there. Yeah, and both of those have benefits and pros and cons and stuff. The main thing is keep it covered. All right, well thank you, Jason. Yep.